So we brought the abortion debate down to one question. What are the unborn? So how do we respond to that? Well, let's begin by looking at what the scientific community says about when life begins. According to Morin Persaud's embryology textbook, Before We Are Born, Essentials of Embryology and Birth Defects, it says the following. Human development begins at fertilization. Although human development is usually divided into prenatal, before birth, and postnatal, after birth periods, development is a continuum that begins at fertilization. This is the textbook that is used by medical students studying medicine at the University of British Columbia. Besides considering what embryology textbooks say, we can demonstrate when life begins by drawing the following timeline. Grab a piece of scrap paper and pen and draw a line with the age of the person you're speaking to written on the right. Then say to her, we know 20 years ago you were born and that nine months prior to that fertilization occurred. At fertilization, a person's DNA is determined, for example, whether you are male or female. Because living things come from other living things, we know that the unborn person is alive. And unlike sperm and egg, which are parts of a being, the zygote at fertilization is a whole being with the inherent capacity to move to the next more mature stage of her development. Finally, because we know that living things reproduce after their own kind, it follows that in human reproduction, the kind of being in existence at fertilization is human like her parents. Well, that's the basic science of the matter. Why then do so many people say the unborn can be killed for reasons we do not kill the born? Well, what happens is those individuals look at the form and function differences between the unborn and the born. And they state that even though the unborn are of our species, they may be killed because they're different from us. Indeed, the unborn are different from the born in some ways. The question is, are those differences relevant when it comes to value? All differences between the unborn and the born can be summarized into four categories. Size, level of development, environment, and dependency. Between fertilization and birth, we see size increasing. The same goes for one's physical and mental development. The unborn change their environment, beginning in the fallopian tube, moving to the uterus, followed by into the doctor's hands. As for their dependency on their moms, that's something that decreases over those first nine months. Now there are some who would say that the unborn may be humans, but they aren't persons because of these differences. But look at the time between birth and age 20 and consider what's changed. Those same four things have changed. Size continues to increase, as does level of development. Our environment changes all the time and we increasingly become independent. But after birth, we'd say that while the four differences exist, they don't matter when it comes to our value. In other words, our worth is based on our humanity, not our appearance or ability. After all, consider my nephew Francis, who is smaller than my niece Monica. Does that mean Francis may be killed while Monica may not? Of course not. Likewise, an unborn child is smaller than Francis, but that doesn't mean she may be killed. Or take level of development. Monica isn't as developed intellectually as adults are. That was very evident to me when at the age of one and a half, I asked her who her favorite aunt was. This was her reply. Hey Monica, who's your favorite aunt? Honey. No, that's where your favorite aunt lives. What's the name of your favorite aunt? She's not developed enough intellectually to know the difference between her aunt living in Calgary and her aunt being Calgary. But nonetheless, she's a valuable human being. Likewise, the unborn aren't as developed to the level Monica is at. But regardless, we would say they too are valuable human beings. As for environment, we don't change what we are when we change where we are. The same with dependency. Our right to live isn't rooted in how independent we are. It's based on what we are. Therefore, those who support abortion need to consider these questions. Do we kill newborns because they're less developed than 20-year-olds? Of course not. Why then would we kill the unborn because they're less developed than newborns? Or do we kill toddlers because they're more dependent than teenagers? Yet again, no. 
Why then do we kill the unborn because they are more dependent than toddlers? After birth, we'd say that while the four differences exist, they don't matter when it comes to our value. In other words, our worth is based on our humanity, not our appearance or ability. Likewise with the unborn, the fact that they are different from us in these four ways is irrelevant. They are human and thus equal to we who are born. Finally, as you look at this timeline, contemplate this. The reason why the unborn are smaller than the born, or why a toddler is less developed than a teenager, is that for the younger one, less time has passed by, and time is reflected in our age. So the question we must ask ourselves is this. Do those of us who are older have a right to kill those who are younger? Certainly not in this case, nor when someone is pregnant. To permit abortion is to permit age discrimination, and that must be stopped.